Um, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, is everyone having a good time so far? <laughs> Are you excited to be at PyCon Australia? Yeah. Let's give it up for the organizers for organizing such a wonderful event. Um, so, hi, I'm Vinayak Mehta. Uh, I'm from Bangalore, India. And I'm the author of uh, Camelot and Excalibur, uh, the two Python packages that this talk is about. Uh, I'm also an organizer for PyData Bangalore. Uh, we just started in June this year, and uh, we are doing like one meetup every month, and we'll possibly do a PyData conference next year. So, uh, and uh, if you're ever in Bangalore and you want to give a talk at a meetup, you, uh, you can just simply open an issue on that GitHub repo. Um, during the day, I'm a data engineer at Groofers, which is an online uh, grocery del delivery service in India. If you want to uh, like know more about uh, the kind of stuff I work on, you can catch me afterwards. And cool. Uh, so in this talk, uh, I'll just uh, like show you how you can use Camelot and Excalibur to uh, extract tables from PDFs very easily. So this is the high-level overview. Overview. We'll. Uh, go through the history of the portable document format. Uh, uh, I'll touch upon some of the problems I faced while extracting tables from uh, PDF files. Then uh, I'll show you, uh, like I'll demonstrate how you can use Camelot and Excalibur to do that. Uh, then we'll uh, discuss the project roadmaps and uh, uh, do a Q&A if, if we have time. And yeah, there'll be some uh, fun Python facts. <laughs> so let's begin with the first fact. Why is Python called Python? Yeah, uh, correct. So while he began implementing the language, uh, Guido Van Rossum was also reading the published uh, scripts from Monty Python's Flying Circus, which is uh, a co BBC comedy series from the 70s. And uh, he thought that he needed a name that was short, unique, and slightly mysterious. And so we have Python. Cool, let's go through the history. Uh, so PDF, the PDF uh, format came out of the Camelot project, which was, uh, like, uh, and it started almost 30 years ago. Uh, this is a six-page memo by Jay Warnock, the co-founder of Adobe, where he uh, details the goals of the project. Uh, so just some quick facts. Uh, it was created in the early 1990s by Adobe, predates the World Wide Web in HTML. It was proprietary initially. But it was released as an uh, ISO standard uh, with version 1.7 in 2008. And since then, uh, 13 versions have been released. So the goal of the project was uh, that the documents uh, like should be viewable on any display. Uh, like it, it shouldn't matter uh, what OS uh, you're using to look at a document. They should look the same on like across machine configurations, across networks. And uh, they should be uh, like they should print the same uh, on any printer, and uh, the same as the author intended. Hence, portable. Uh, it was uh, it came out uh, like from a subset of the uh, like PostScript language, which is a page description language by Adobe itself. Uh, PostScript itself is uh, quite broad, uh, in like most uh, other functionality wasn't needed. Uh, the PDF format encapsulates uh, components required to build and render a document, which include your like text, fonts, uh, vector graphics, and raster images. And uh, all these components are kind of packaged within the within a PDF file, and they travel with the file wherever it goes. So, like at a very high level, uh, all these components are placed uh, like on a two D page uh, relative to the bottom left. Uh, like corner of that page, which you can think of as an origin of a 2D plane. So, uh, like w uh, words are simulated by uh, placing some characters closer than others, and sentences are simulated by placing words relatively far apart. Uh, how are uh, like how are tables simulated then? Uh, by just placing these characters and words like they would appear in a spreadsheet, uh, uh, relative to the uh, bottom left origin, of course. So <laughs> there's uh, the PDF format has no internal representation of a table structure. Uh, uh, all these uh, like characters and words that you see, uh, uh, the PDF format doesn't understand the, uh, like what, which of these words constitute a row and which of these words constitute a column. And uh, like because of that, uh, it's a pain 
to extract these tables for analysis. Uh, sadly, a lot of open data is released as PDF files. Uh, like there are possibly millions or like billions of these PDF files out there. Uh, and yeah, basically it's a pain to extract a table out uh, like from a PDF, which is different from a CSV. Uh, because uh, all of the data is stored in plain text and uh, each line in that plain text file is a row and each uh, item in that row is a column. So, and it's pretty human readable, so you can uh, like understand what uh, the table structure by just looking at a CSV file, or maybe a JSON file. And both of these formats can be read directly into Pandas or any other uh, data analysis tool or library and uh, used for analysis. Uh, now, uh, let's go back to PDF, PDF for a bit. So, if, <laughs> if you've ever tried to do this, uh, like if you've, <laughs> if you've ever tried to ex uh, basically copy paste uh, text from a PDF file, you would have seen this. It's very hard to uh, like, uh, like get, uh, get anything out of uh, a PDF file by just selecting and copying it. And uh, so like uh, in 2016, I was working uh, on uh, extracting uh, tables from a lot of PDF files which were released as open data. And these are some of the PDF files I've worked with. Uh, you can imagine that doing this uh, on hundreds of different types of table structures in hundreds of pages would have been, like it's not scalable, right? Um, so uh, like what do you do when you uh, like, uh, uh, like come across a problem like this? You look for existing tools that might have already solved that problem. Um, so uh, the first tool that I found that worked kind of uh, like well was Tabula. It's Java-based. It's open source. It has it has a nice web interface. Uh, there, there's also PDF Plumber, which is Python-based and open source. Uh, PDF Tables, which uh, which is like which was released as an open source package, but then later they converted it to a proprietary service. PDF Table Extract, which is unfortunately no longer maintained, and there are like a plethora of open like free and paid online services that you can use to like do this. Uh, this is one of the services that I tried. But they have a problem. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a page out of a weekly disease outbreaks report released uh, by the Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare in India. It uh, like uh, tells you uh, the number of cases and number of deaths uh, uh, for different diseases in various Indian districts. In a comment uh, on uh, like what action was taken to um, like against that outbreak. Uh, so this is the result when we pass it through tabular. Uh, you can see that the headers are split into uh, different rows, and uh, the uh, the comments column has like shifted places into like multiple columns. Uh, this is the output when you pass it through PDF tables. Uh, it is slightly better, but it costs money, and uh, yeah, it's still not a very nice output. So a, a solution um, that I tried, um, but uh, yeah. So when like when you pass a PDF through these tools, and you get only like you get a result which is not very nice to work with, and you can't do anything about it, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, like one solution that I tried was using PDF to text, which is uh, a command line utility that. Uh, is installed on many Linux systems under popular utils. You can just uh, like uh, you can use the uh, layout argument that it has to convert a PDF file into a text file, and it'll basically preserve uh, the layout of that PDF file using spaces. But there's a problem with this solution too, that uh, like you have to basically write custom code for each different type of PDF table structure uh, that was extracted. Uh, which is again like not scalable. You can't write, keep writing custom code for hundreds of different types of PDF table structures in like hundreds and like basically different types of structures. Cool. So this is uh, a solution that uh, we came up with at Social Cops uh, to overcome basically the problem of not having a configurable tool which uh, which like gave you some parameters that you could tweak to like get a better table output so that you weren't stuck with uh, zero or one situation. Um, and to 
overcome the like the problem that we faced which were with the, those tools that they were not developer friendly they were not configurable so uh, why camelot it works well out of the box uh, it uh, recognizes uh, tables in most uh, like in most cases uh, without you having to do anything and like for other cases there are uh, various options that the library offers that you can tweak for example uh, say you could uh, you could uh, give in uh, like a table area for the library to look tables in uh, you could also pass in column separators for example if the library recognized only one column in a table you could say uh, no uh, there are actually five columns in that table at these offsets um, a lot uh, a feature that a lot of users uh, like is visual debugging and plotting using matplotlib uh, this enables you to basically see what the library uh, library sees uh, uh, you can visualize all the uh, different components in the pdf that the library found and where it found them uh, you can ex then export those tables to multiple formats including uh, like csv json in excel or an html file or even just get a pandas data frame out of that PDF, uh, so that you can directly integrate it with your data analysis workflows. And it's Python-based, MIT-licensed, and the documentation is excellent. Uh, <laughs> it, it has a like, lot of examples for you to look at, uh, like about the different parameters that the library offers. Uh, so let's do a short demo. Uh, this is the same page uh, that I showed you earlier uh, that we passed through tabular and PDF tables. Uh, let me just launch a Jupyter Notebook. So it's not really a demo, it's a Jupyter Notebook. I've already <laughs> like run it because live coding works only like 50, 50, like 50 percent of the time. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, like you just, to use a library, you just import Camelot. Uh, then you just do a camelot.read PDF and pass in the file path to that PDF file. It's, the API is similar to Panda's uh, read API, which uh, like read CSV or read HTML. Uh, then you get a table list object, which is basically a container of tables. Uh, here we see that uh, uh, it recognized one table in that PDF, uh, in, on that PDF page, and yeah, there's one table in there. So, and then you can access each table object using an index. So if you do a tables zero, you will see the uh, like the shape of the table, which is uh, like seven rows and 10 columns. It will also give you a parsing report. So the accuracy here means uh, the accuracy with which the library was able to uh, assign these different text boxes into different cells that it recognized as the, uh, like in the table. And then, uh, 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 like, do you want me to zoom in? Uh, we can go like go to questions at the end, um, and then you can get the data frame. Oh, oh, in yeah, you can like basically it'll basically tell you the order in which the table was found on that PDF page. You can get a data frame out using a table zero dot df, and this is the data frame that we uh, get for this table, uh, which you can see is uh, like a nice table to work with. You get the comments column uh, like intact, uh, like all the comments are in a single cell. And then you can export all these tables as a CSV. If you do an LS, it'll just, um, uh, like it shows that the CSV file that it exported. You can pass in different formats to this tables.export function. And then this is the visual debugging uh, thing that I was talking about. So you can visualize the text that was f uh, found on that PDF page. Uh, you can plot the grid uh, that the library recognized for the table. Uh, you can plot the uh, table areas that were found on a PDF page. You can find, uh, plot the lines that were found. You can plot the intersections that were found. Uh, these are basically to just tweak uh, like the different parameters that the library offers. So if you don't see many intersections on a PDF page, you could just tweak a parameter and then see if uh, new intersections were recognized or not. And then uh, you will probably have a better result. Um, so this is the documentation. It's on read the docs. Let me zoom in. Um, so you can like, uh, go to the advanced usage section. And uh, like, it'll tell you about various parameters that the library offers. 
So this is the visual debugging section. And then you can specify column separators. You can flag superscripts and subscripts. So in this case, the superscript doesn't matter because the number occurs after a decimal. But what if it was 10 to the power 1? <laughs> It'll become 101, which would fudge up your results, kind of. And then you can maybe strip characters from the text. So you can basically strip garbage values out of the text strings that were found on a PDF page. So like here we can see that there are multiple dots that you don't really need. And you can just strip them by specifying uh, this argument. And there are like some other arguments that you can also look at uh, when you go back. Mm. Cool. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. So I just included this image in case the Jupyter Notebook somehow didn't work. Camelot <laughs> uh, uh, also comes with a command line interface that you can use. Um, the installation is pretty easy using Conda. So you can just do a Conda install Camelot-py and specify the channel, which is Conda Forge. And it, you don't need to care about the dependencies uh, if you're using Conda. But if you're using pip, uh, you will need to install some dependencies first, which are tk and go script. And then you can simply do a pip install Camelot-py and cv in square brackets. Uh, cv because there are multiple extras in this package, and uh, the one you need is cv because it installs open cv with the package. Um, so how it works? Um, it's basically built on top of PDF Miner, which is a Python, like a great Python library that gives you um, all the components, uh, all the text components on a PDF page along with their uh, X, Y locations. Uh, it comes with two parsing flavors, lattice and stream. Uh, the, these names were inspired from Tabula itself. Lattice looks for lines uh, on a PDF page to identify a table. So this table has lines, so you will probably use lattice. But if the table didn't have lines, you would like you you should use stream. So Lattice converts the PDF page into an image using GoScript and then uses OpenCV to uh, identify lines on that page. And uh, stream basically looks for uh, text edges on a page. So that means basically how uh, your text is aligned, left, right, or center, uh, like to uh, form that table representation. And uh, this is a disclaimer that uh, Camelot right now only works with text-based PDFs and uh, not scanned documents. So if you can click and drag uh, and select uh, anything on your PDF, that means it is text-based. And uh, if you can, can, can't do that, that means it's, it's scanned. Uh, so look, we have a fun fact sign. <laughs> mm, so uh, like you would be wondering why it's called Camelot. So it's, as you can already guess, it was named after the Camelot project which is also the name of a castle in Monty Python and the Holy Grail, uh, which is based on an Arthurian legend, on the Arthurian legend. Another fun fact, uh, the Python package index was called the cheese shop, based on the Monty Python cheese shop sketch. You should definitely check out Monty Python's Flying Circus. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, what if you don't want to write code? Camelot comes with a web interface that you can use directly. Um, so after installing Excalibur, which we'll come to later, you can just do an Excalibur web server and then go to localhost colon 5000, which is the port, to uh, uh, like use that web interface. Um, why Excalibur? Um, a web interface is, like for most people, easier to use than a Python library. Uh, I guess uh, not here because a lot of us are Python developers, uh, because we are at PyCon. Um, and uh, you can basically save uh, these rules, uh, 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 like which are basically a JSON of all the extraction parameters that Camelot can uh, like take as an input. And uh, since it's on your machine, your data is safe with you. You can work on it in the safety of your own home. And it's architected so that you can use Celery for parallel and distributed workloads. Uh, by default, it uses multiprocessing. Uh, so let's do a quick demo. Uh, we can just launch Excalibur web server, and then you can go to localhost 5000. This is the interface. Uh, you upload your file. Um, you can set in page numbers. Uh, by default, it takes one as the page number. Then you need to refresh it, because it has started a background job to convert that page into an image. Um, so here you can uh, like basically use these different options. 
uh, you can auto detect a table, or uh, you can basically select uh, the different parameters that Camelot can take as an input. You can select the, um, like the flavor, and then you click on view and download data. This again starts a background job, and then uh, you can see that data uh, like on the interface itself, and then download it in whatever format you want. Um, but what if your table like, is buried in some corner of your PDF? Uh, we'll again wait for it to convert it into an image. So this is the PDF. The table is buried like, on the right hand, like in between some paragraphs. So in those cases, Camelot won't be able to recognize it. Here you can like, just select that table, uh, select stream, because there are no lines that uh, uh, are like, uh, specifying that table. You can add a column um, using this. But in this case, we don't uh, need a column separator because we've already given the uh, library uh, a specific area to look into. So we just remove it by double clicking. And then again, you view and download. Uh, you click on view and download, and uh, you get that table out. Uh. Um, so installation is, again, pretty simple. After installing the dependencies, you just do a pip install Excalibur-Py. And again, fun facts. <laughs> uh, as you can guess, uh, it is named after the legendary Sword of King Arthur. Another fun fact, the metasyntactic variables in the Python documentation are called spam and eggs instead of the, in, instead of the traditional foo and bar. Uh, based on the Monty Python spam sketch. You should check it out. Cool. <laughs> so this is the roadmap for both these projects. The first thing that we are looking to uh, remove, uh, like uh, the first thing that we are looking to do is remove GoScripted and OpenCV as requirements, because a lot of people face issues uh, like with installing GoScript uh, because of different operating systems. Then there are like other performance and web interface enhancements that we, uh, we need to do. Uh, we, we also plan to add OCR support for scanned documents, and then maybe your favorite feature. You can like come talk to me afterwards. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Demet Demeter Nedenov uh, for some of the content that you saw on, uh, on this presentation today. He's a, a contributor for like to both these projects. And cool, you can just find me on GitHub here, and you can find the projects on GitHub here. And yeah, that was it. I hope uh, you find these projects useful. Thank you, Thank you for such a great talk. Um, do we have any questions? Yes, great. Thank you. Uh, does the system handle tables that are spread across multiple pages? Yeah, so you can basically specify page numbers, uh, like based on the uh, pages in the PDF where tables are on, and it'll give you separate data frames for those tables in a table list. G'day, thank you. Um, not long ago, I was given a quick task of going through 100 day reports where the site supervisor had given a heading and then a bunch of bullet points for each heading. And I looked at your tool and then figured that because it wasn't a table, your tool wouldn't apply, but mm -hmm. you gave us the hint that um, there is no actual table type. So yeah. could your tool handle more semi-structured PDFs instead of outright tables? Um, so I guess you could just uh, like uh, specify table area based on the bulleted list that you specified, and I think you should be able to get uh, that bulleted list in separate rows of like a table. I'm uh, curious to learn a little bit more about social cops uh, because it sounds like that's where you did a lot of the work with it. Uh, what? Uh, social cops. It sounds like that's where you did a lot of the development of your tool. Yeah. So, uh, like, the tool was developed when I was working at social cops, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I just got so excited that I asked you about accuracy in between, but I just want to, just curious about what that accuracy is measure is and how that's calculated and. Behind the scenes, how does it know how accurate it is? Um, that's something that will help. Um, so uh, like based on the table that the library found on a table, it would have some coordinates for the table. And then it would have, it would have some coordinates for each cell. And then uh, uh, like it gets 
the text boxes out of PDF finder, which has their own coordinates. Now, uh, like, uh, like uh, when it uh, like assigns each text box to a table cell, uh, it sees uh, like how perfectly it lies within a cell, and that's how the accuracy is calculated. Um, so I just noticed between the lattice and the stream, you had an example where there was a, uh, a lattice-based table. So presumably you're reading the, the structure of the cells from the, um, the, the pixels between them. Um, but does the lattice scanning also include the stream scanning? Because there was one where you had uh, a lattice structure, but then the main body of the table was all delimited by tabs. Does it, does it do both at the same time? No, they are like quite separate. They are like uh, lattice will use OpenCV to detect some lines, but stream will just process the text, uh, like the alignment of the text, to basically guess the table uh, like structure. Okay, but they are separate. Uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering cases where your tool actually breaks. Um, <laughs> so uh, basically, scan documents is one case uh, because it won't be able to get uh, the text uh, box, uh, like the text out, and you would have to do some kind of an OCR step before actually like getting the text out. And uh, like for most other cases, uh, you can base, uh, like actually tweak the parameters to get to the result that you want. So like it's quite configurable in that way, but there aren't a lot of cases where it breaks. Like where in it breaks. Okay. Oh, thank you again, Vinaya, for giving such a great talk and a small you. token of our appreciation.